In this video, I'm gonna show you a VOR approach. As you can see here, it is storming, so we would need to use an IFR approach in order to come into Ogden here. I'm also gonna show you how to look up a uh, approach plate that you can find on the Federal Aviation Administration website and kind of set everything up. Now, the first half of this video is just setting things up. So if you just wanna see the approach, uh, look in the comments below, I'll tag a time for where we actually start the approach instead of setting it all up. Before we get started, if you do enjoy this content, please support the channel by doing one of three things. First, which is absolutely free, subscribe. Second, go into the description, click on Keyboard Flight Academy, and join Keyboard Flight Academy, where we teach you how to fly as real to life as possible in your simulator. Last, click on any of the Amazon links below. Uh, you don't have to buy the actual product that's being listed. Uh, if you have something in mind, click on the link, search for it, and purchase it. This actually still helps us out, and it can be literally anything. Now let's get back to the video. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna look up the approach plate. And as you can see, I am on the Federal Aviation Administration website. Uh, and this is for America only. So if you're going to do an approach plate for another country, then you'll have to look it up elsewhere. But for the uh, FAA, they do have a website that is absolutely free to come on and look at the approach plates. Um, and I will put this link in the description below. But we're going to go to Ogden, Utah, K-O-G-D. So you need to know the ICAO code, which is the four-digit code. Click go. And it's going to pop up here with everything that uh, applies to Ogden. As you can see here, here's VOR Alpha. That's the one that we're going to be using. So I click on this right here. I can uh, expand it a little bit so that we can see nice and close. There's several aspects to this plate. Uh, as you can see up here, there's some notes and some frequencies and things of that sort. I'm going to teach you the absolute minimums. So the first thing we need to know is we're right about here. Uh, we're going to enter in at a initial approach fix. You can see here there's an IAF. This is one of the initial approach fixes, and it's named GEMQ. It is 10 DME from the Ogden Vortac, OGD. And we're going to follow this 10 DME arc all the way around and then come in on radial 281, which is inbound 101. And then eventually we are going to hit the airport. And as you can see here, when we come in, we're actually not lined up with a runway. Here are the two different runways, and we're coming in this way. So we're either gonna have to circle this way or circle that way to come to one of these runways. So the first thing we need to find out is what the weather is at Ogden. So we know which runway to go to. If we come up here, there is an ATIS 125.55. So let's go back to the simulator and listen to the weather. All right, so usually you'd hit these buttons over here and tune the um, comms with these buttons right here. Uh, but since Microsoft Flight Simulator has this ATC box, we're going to go ahead and use it. Nearest airport, we're going to look up Ogden, and we're going to look for the ATIS. Tune Ogden ATIS. And now we're going to listen for the wind in particular. Ogden airport information call 230 Wind 25, A's at 5 one. 258 at 5-1. That's all we need to know for now. So the weather was 258 at 51. That means the direction of the wind is 258 and the speed of the wind is 51 knots, which that's screaming. So we'll see how I do on this landing. I'm not too sure how I'll do. <laughs> but the runways are also directional and it would be three digits, but they actually just take away the last digit and leave the first two. So this might be 350 or 353 or something to that extent, but they take away that last number and just leave it as two or three five. So the wind is 258. We're gonna take that last number off, the eight, and we're gonna think of two five. Now, which number is closest to two five? Three five is 10 off. Um, 21 to two five would be four. Uh, and 17 would be more than that. So we know that 21 is going to be the best wind for this. So we'll go ahead and circle to 2-1 uh, to do this. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to tune the frequency. So for this one, we only have this one VOR that we need to uh, tune in or Vortac. It's 115.7. So let's go ahead and tune that in and get everything ready for it. Okay, here we are. We need to tune in 115.7. And here we have nav 1 and nav 2. That's where these go. Uh, you can see we're currently loaded into nav 1. 
the green one is what it is and you can also see localizer one so that's the one if it was on two it would say two as you can see two nav two perfect and then it goes to gps we'll go ahead and do it right here in nav one it needs to be 115.7 so the first numbers are done with the bottom one i pull it to the right until i see 115 and then 0.7 that's going to be the top one and we're going to move that over oh wrong way to right there 115.7 and it needs to be in the green spot so we're going to hit this and it moves right on over and ogd that is the vortex that we're going to so that's how we know that it is tuned in correctly let's go back to the approach plate and talk about a couple other things so now we have it tuned in and the ogd did come up so that's how we know that uh, we are on the right vortex and uh, we're over here somewhere so we want to make sure that we come in on radio 153 and it's going to be 10 dme away and then we're going to do that arc all the way around and inbound uh, well all the way around until we hit uh, radio 281 or inbound on 101. so let's go ahead and make sure that we're set on radio 153 and that we have dme set up so that we can follow the 10 dme arc so we are tuned in now we just have to change it over um, the radio is 153. That's going to be this triangle right here. We're going to move it until it says 153. And there's 152, 153 right there. The course is what we're looking at. So we are, that's radio 153. As you can see, this is our airplane. Uh, we need to fly towards this uh, line until it lines up with the rest of the line. So we're going to have to fly out that way. Now that's the uh, 153 radial, but then we have to fly the DME arc. And if I haven't said what DME is yet, it stands for Distance Measuring Equipment. So it's telling us how far away we are from that Vortac. And uh, we pull that up by going to the PFD options, and we want to bring in bearing. And uh, there's several different bearings. There's the ILS, the GPS. Uh, just keep on clicking it until you get what you want. And we want NAV1, which is Ogden, so OGD326 is the exact radial we're on right now and we are 12.5 dme away so we can leave it like that or we can come over here and hit dme as well and it's going to show us 12.5 nautical miles uh, away from nav one so uh, either one works you don't necessarily have to have both i'll have both up just for the heck of it now what exactly did that bearing do you can see we have another arrow up here it's this blue one if you see nav one blue like this uh, if we change it to another uh, bearing, then sometimes it'll have uh, another line with like two lines on it. So we want to check here. Yes, that looks like that one. This line represents the direction directly to that uh, vortex. So Ogden, if we flew this direction, then we would go directly to uh, the vortex. Now let's go ahead and hit back so that we're back to the CDI options. And... Uh, Let's look at the plate one more time and then we're going to get started. So since we're right about here, we're going to fly straight into GemQ. We're going to intercept this 153 radial and then we're going to be watching DME arc as well. Um, once we're close to the 10 DME arc, then we're going to turn left and follow and try to keep 10 DME or 10 nautical miles away from the Vortac. And we're going to follow that all the way until we reach this radial out here, which is 281 or 101 inbound. So that's our lateral navigation. The last thing that we have to pay attention to right now is uh, our vertical navigation, which is how high above the ground we are and how high above the ground we need to be. You can see right here, it shows our vertical requirements. Uh, up to Ogden, it's gonna be 7,200. If there's a line below it, it means 7,200 or above. So 5,700 or above. If the line was above it, then it means uh, 7,200 or below. Uh, if there's lines on both sides, it means you have to stay right at 7,200. So we have to stay 7,200 or above. You can also see on here, it shows right here, 7,200, and then you come all the way. And then uh, on this leg, it's going to be 5,700, uh, and then so on down to your point. So it'd be 5,700 there. Um, you can't go below 5,700 in this section and then on the final one you're going to be looking at your minimums which that's 4980 you cannot go below 4980 on this section 
and then you're going to keep on coming in. Once you hit 3.5 nautical miles from the Vortac, the Vortac is right here. So we'll be coming out this way once it says 3.5 and we don't see the airport, then we have to go mist. And that's something I'll talk about uh, another time, but the mist approach is right up here. It also has a visual representation right here. So there it is, it's coming in. And here's the uh, DME right down here. We're 11.8. We want to be following 10. And how we do the uh, VOR DME, the easiest way is to be watching this right here. And we want it at the 90 degree angle. That means it's gonna be right out our right window. So I'm gonna be turning until that bearing touches right here. I'll kind of explain that on the plate once we get closer. About 11.5 uh, is when I'm gonna start doing that turn. Here comes uh, 10, or 10.5 I should say. So we are 10.7. And see there's the radial right there. We wanna come in. I kind of missed it a little bit, but that's okay. So first we want to follow this, then here's 10.3. So actually right away we're going to start turning out this way. I want this to be pointing at the 90 degree point. So we're turning back over and we're actually blowing through 10. So this isn't a fantastic uh, um, example, but I'll show you how we go ahead and correct that. So since we're going inbound, we want this arrow to be actually down this way now so that we can go back out. So here we are coming to nine DME, which is too far. So we're gonna let it keep on coming out. Here's our heading. Now it's gonna start coming back to 10. So watch what it does. And we don't have to worry about this line anymore because we're on the DME arc now. So 9.3, 9.5. All right, so let's start turning right a little bit and get this more towards the 90 degrees, 9.6. It's moving fairly fast, 9.7. 9.8. And the shallower the uh, angle, the better it's going to be for the DME arc. And you're going to have to continually change your heading because it's going to continually want to fall that way. Okay, 10.1, so we need to turn a lot more. And if it's ahead, then we're going to get closer. Now let's go ahead and look at what uh, radial we do need to come in on. So bring this up. We need to come in on the 281 radial. So let's go ahead and tune that in. So it is going to be 281 right up here. 281. All right, 10.1. It's getting, we're still a little bit ahead of it, which is good. And now we're on 10 DME. So this is exactly where we want to be. Uh, 90 degree mark. We'll keep on following it like that. So let me pull up the uh, plate one more time. We're somewhere right here flying the arc. Once we hit the 281, we're going to intercept that and come directly in um, and go from there. 7200 is where we're at. Once we get to this point, we're gonna descend to 5700. Okay, here it comes. So let's go ahead and start turning. And I'm actually gonna hit nav so that we intercept this and continue on that way. So let's come over here and hit the nav button. Boom, there we go. 
we are on the VOR. It's going to intercept this now. It's going to stop paying attention to that bug. And we now need to come down to 5,700 feet. So let's go ahead and set that altitude. Uh, as you can see here, we need to come down to 57. 5700, there it is right there. The approach plate, so the next position is at the Vortac. So that's gonna be zero DME, that means we're right above it, 5700. After that, we can descend down to 4980 and we're gonna be looking outside to see if we can see the runway. Okay, so here we are on the outside again. I'm actually hand flying from here on out. I'm a little high, 5700 is where we can be. Higher is better than lower though. And I am tracking right here. Uh, we are coming in 4.1 nautical miles away. And we can start to see, as you can see here. There we go, we're coming out of the clouds. Don't want to go below 5700. Once we pass over the VOR, I think I see some blue lights, which that would be the, uh, the taxiways. And there we go, kind of a flag flip. I'm a little off course too, but we're flipping over. You'll see it coming, screaming back over to us here in a second. That's how we know we've passed it. So we can go down to 4980. Well, I'm just gonna set 5000, start descending. That is definitely the airport. Okay, so now I'm gonna actually set a heading for 210 as well. Um, that way I know that I am heading towards the right runway once I get there. And we're going too fast slow down and I'm gonna start circling now but here we come I uh, did a little bit of a wide turn there and you can see indeed our bug is right on 2-1 uh, so we know that we are on the right runway Still high, let's 500. descend a bit. We can do a good crosswind landing, hopefully so. Green is the threshold, that's where we can come in. The red, that's, uh, we are not allowed to land there. Okay, there's two and two, so let's keep that. Now we're getting low. and we can land at any point past here. Not too shabby, whoa, don't get off course. And here's a taxiway exit right in front of us. So let's take that. Oh, it's taking us off into the grass. Interesting. Okay. And we are off the runway. We made it. If you do enjoy this content, please support the channel by doing one of three things. First, which is absolutely free, subscribe. Second, go into the description, click on Keyboard Flight Academy and join Keyboard Flight Academy where we teach you how to fly as real to life as possible in your simulator. Last, click on any of the Amazon links below. Uh, you don't have to buy the actual product that's being listed. Uh, if you have something in mind, click on the link, search for it and purchase it. This actually still helps us out and it can be literally anything.